Have you ever wondered how a will can be legally allowed or disallowed in the Philippines? The process of allowance and disallowance of wills is a fundamental aspect of estate planning and succession law. This topic is particularly significant as it is frequently asked in the Philippine Bar Examination. Understanding how wills are scrutinized and validated or invalidated is essential for bar examinees, law students, and legal professionals. This video aims to provide a comprehensive overview of the legal framework under Articles 838 to 839 of the New Civil Code, Republic Act 386, ensuring that viewers grasp the critical elements of this area of law. By engaging with this content, bar examinees will gain insights into a crucial examination topic. Law students will deepen their understanding of succession law and professionals will refresh their knowledge and practical application in handling wills. This knowledge is not only academically valuable but also practically essential for ensuring the proper execution and administration of estates. Before we dive into the details, make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our latest content on Philippine law and other essential topics that can help you in your legal studies and practice. Allowance and Disallowance of Wills, A Detailed Examination I Overview of Articles 838 to 839 of the New Civil Code Articles 838 and 839 of the New Civil Code provide the legal framework for the allowance and disallowance of wills in the Philippines. These articles ensure that only valid wills are executed and that any defects or legal issues that may render a will invalid are thoroughly examined and addressed. Article 838 Requirements for Allowance of Wills Article 838 outlines the procedural requirements for the probate of wills. It states, No will shall pass either real or personal property unless it is proved and allowed in accordance with the rules of court. This means that a will must undergo a judicial process called probate, where the court determines its validity. During probate, the court examines whether the will was executed in compliance with the formalities required by law and whether the testator had the legal capacity and intention to make the will. Formalities of execution The formalities of executing a will are critical to its validity. According to Article 805 of the New Civil Code, a notarial will must be, 1, in writing and signed by the testator. 2, attested and subscribed by three or more credible witnesses in the presence of the testator and of each other. 3, acknowledged before a notary public by the testator and the witnesses. Holographic wills, on the other hand, are entirely written dated, and signed by the testator in their handwriting, as per Article 810. Legal Capacity and Volition For a will to be allowed, the testator must have the legal capacity to make a will. This includes being of sound mind and at least 18 years of age. The testator must also have acted voluntarily, free from duress, undue influence, or fraud, Article 839, Grounds for Disallowance of Wills Article 839 provides the grounds on which a will can be disallowed. These include, 1, lack of testamentary capacity, if the testator was not of sound mind at the time of making the will. 2, undue influence, fraud, or duress, if the will was procured through these means. 3, noncompliance with formalities, if the will does not comply with the formal requirements set by law. 4. Revocation, if the will has been revoked by the testator. 5. Incapacity of witnesses, if the witnesses to the will were incompetent to testify. Each ground must be substantiated with evidence during the probate proceedings. 2. Detailed discussion of each ground for disallowance. 1. Lack of testamentary capacity. A testator must have the mental capacity to understand the nature of their act in making a will, 
the extent of their property, and the natural objects of their bounty. If a testator lacks this capacity, the will can be disallowed. 2. Undue influence, fraud, or duress, a will must be the product of the testator's free will. If a will is executed under undue influence, fraud, or duress, it is invalid, undue influence. Undue influence occurs when someone exerts excessive pressure on the testator, overcoming their free will. Factors considered include the relationship between the testator and the influencer, the testator's susceptibility, and the opportunity to exert influence. Fraud Fraud involves deceit or trickery used to manipulate the testator into making a will or including certain provisions. Evidence of misrepresentation or deceit is required to establish fraud. Duress Duress involves threats or coercion that force the testator to act against their will. It must be shown that the threats were serious and immediate. 3. Non-compliance with formalities A will must adhere to the prescribed formalities to be valid. Any deviation can be grounds for disallowance. Examples of non-compliance Missing signatures of the testator or witnesses Lack of proper acknowledgement before a notary public Incomplete holographic will 4. Revocation A will is revoked if the testator executes a subsequent will that expressly revokes the previous one or if the testator destroys the will with the intent to revoke it. The revocation must be clear and intentional. Revocation methods Express revocation, stating in a new will that the previous will is revoked. Implied revocation, creating a new will with provisions inconsistent with the previous one. Physical act, tearing, burning, or otherwise destroying the will. 5. Incapacity of witnesses. Witnesses to a will must be competent to testify. Article 820 of the New Civil Code states that any person of sound mind and legal age can be a witness to a will. If a witness is found to be incompetent, their testimony can be invalidated, potentially disallowing the will. 3. The probate process. Steps in probate. 1. Filing the petition. An interested party files a petition for the probate of the will. 2. Publication of notice. The court publishes a notice of the hearing in a newspaper of general circulation. 3. Hearing. The court conducts a hearing to examine the will and hear any objections. 4. Presentation of evidence. Parties present evidence supporting or contesting the will. 5. Court decision. The court issues a decision allowing or disallowing the will. Role of the executor. The executor, named in the will, is responsible for managing the estate during the probate process. Their duties include collecting assets, paying debts, and distributing the remaining property according to the will. Challenges and Contests Interested parties may contest the will by presenting evidence of any grounds for disallowance. The court thoroughly reviews all claims and makes a determination based on the evidence presented. Conclusion Understanding the allowance and disallowance of wills is crucial for anyone involved in estate planning, probate, and succession law. By familiarizing yourself with the legal requirements and grounds for disallowance, you can ensure that wills are properly executed and that the testator's intentions are honored. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content on Philippine law and other essential legal topics. Stay informed and be prepared for your legal journey. Frequently Asked Questions 1. What happens if a will is disallowed? If a will is disallowed, it is treated as if it never existed. The estate will be distributed according to the laws of intestacy, as if the testator died without a will, legal basis, Article 839 of the New Civil Code. 
2. Can a disallowed will be appealed? Yes, a decision disallowing a will can be appealed. The appellate court will review the evidence and the decision of the lower court. Legal Basis, Rules of Court, Rule 41. 3. What is the effect of a later will on an earlier will? A later will can revoke an earlier will either expressly or by containing provisions that are inconsistent with the earlier will. Legal Basis, Article 830 of the New Civil Code.